Hello everyone and welcome back to episode 2 in our IK mini-series. In the first part I explained how IK works and what it does and in this part and subsequent parts we're going to be covering how to do foot placement with IK. So foot placement is most, one of the most common ways of using IK um, and it's the way of making sure that the feet are always positioned on the floor no matter the incline that the player normally stands on. Because for example we follow the capsule so if I move up on this slope here you can see my uh, back foot there is hovering up over the slope so it's not very realistic but this is quite common you see in games um, but one workaround that some games do is using IK to place the feet uh, games that do this are like the Assassin's Creed games for example and they use it also for the climbing so how do we actually do this for your foot placement so we'll be covering that and we'll go into explaining how IK works using that as an example. So the first thing we need to do is set up uh, traces to, 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 sorry, to detect, detect sorry, where the feet go. So let's go into our character's blueprint. And in here we're going to create a function to do those calculations. So I'll make a new function. And the new function we're going to do is IK foot trace. And the foot trace is going to have a couple of inputs. So the first input here is going to be the um, socket name. And that will be of a type of name. Next, we're going to be using um, our skeleton to place these sockets. So the way the foot trace works is we use a socket to determine the location of each foot. And then from there, work out where we should be tracing. So let's go into our mannequin folder and take a look at our skeleton. So on our skeleton here, we're going to go down to each foot. So I've got foot L, right click, add socket. And we'll do the same for foot R, right click, add socket. So now we've got two sockets at each foot. One thing to note is make sure you take note of the direction of the X axis in the sockets. So for example, on the right foot, X is pointing down, whereas on the left socket, X is pointing up. These are all based on the orientation of the bones. So when we go into the animation blueprint later on, uh, the X coordinate will be the one that we use, but with R, we'll be inverting it, so it goes the other way around, okay? So that's quite important. Keep note of which axis is the one you'll be moving and because it's a foot you're going up and down on the foot so we're using up and down so with the sockets now added we can now do our tracing so let's do a line trace and we go by channel so the start position is going to be the sockets location so from the socket name drag that out and we'll do get socket location and you'll choose the mesh and I'll get the location of that socket on our skeletal mesh. With the return value, we want to right click on that and split it because we don't need all the values. We only need X and Y in this instance. So on the start here, we're going to make vector and we're going to drag X and Y in this. The Z axis though is going to be a bit different. That's because we're going from the hip sort of area down for through the foot and through the floor so we need to get the z-axis of the character's position because if you look the root of the character's middle of the whole entire capsule here so right click get actor location and again split this and drag the z-axis value to the z-axis make vector so that's the start point. The end point is very similar. We do make vector. And because it's going straight down, X and Y are going to stay the same as the start. So X and Y are exactly the same. The Z axis, though, is slightly different in that we'll be taking um, a distance value for this. So in here, we can just type in a value we want. Um, but what I'm going to actually do is put an input on the start of my function here. So in inputs, we're going to put a new input in and call this distance and it will be a float 
So now we can type in distance here. And if you scroll down to the bottom, you'll see get distance. And that goes in like so. So we can now use the function uh, parameter here to determine how far we're tracing down. And we'll go through that number later on and what that means. So this line trace uh, is going to draw a line basically from the hip down through the foot. So to demonstrate this while testing, we're going to draw debug type on to, uh, we'll do one frame. And on out hit, we're going to right click and split that. When you split that out hit, you get loads of data regarding to the hit of the uh, line trace. Now, you only want to do this if you're actually um, hitting something, so actually hitting the floor. So we need a branch in there. And the condition for the branch is its bottom return value. And that basically just returns true or false whether or not we hit something. We now need a return node. So right click, type in return, and get a return node. Bug one into true, and then another one into false. Okay, so the data we need to get out of this. We're gonna take two bits of data out of this. First of all, we're gonna take the location of the hit. So this is the location of the floor in relation to the, the cast. So this out hit location is a world location and we're gonna make this one of the outputs. Now the quickest way to make an output for this is we can just drag it out and drop it onto the return node. And you can rename it out here if you like, uh, but I'll leave it as out hit location. The other node, uh, other, sorry, other information we need to get out of this is the distance we are rising the foot. So to get the distance, we're gonna take the out hit location and do minus vector. And the other vector we're taking away from this is gonna be the location of the mesh. So drag your mesh component out and get location, get world location, and that'll go into there. Now the reason why you're using the mesh location and not the actor location is because imagine that, okay, the floor is where the feet are, but the mesh, root of the mesh, the location of the mesh is where the feet is. So if we're raising, we want to calculate the distance that the foot needs to travel upwards, we're going to take that point rather than the actor's point because the actor's point is in the middle of this capsule. So the mesh gives us the basically the floor. And the hit point, hit location here, will give us a difference between the floor and the foot. So we now got this. We're going to right click on the end result here and split it. And the reason why we're splitting it is because we're only raising the foot, so we only need the z-axis value. We are then going to drag and drop that onto our out hit, uh, sorry, our return node, to add the endpoint there. So I'm just going to type that in as um, foot trace offset. Okay. Uh, the force going into the return node is going to be left at zero for everything. And that should be it for now anyway. We will be returning to this later on. So hit compile and then go back to your event graph. On the event graph, we're going to do a tick event to track these uh, traces going on. So do tick. And we're going to drag in our function and hook it up. So we need a couple of things. We need a socket name and distance. Socket name we get from the mannequin skeleton. So let's open up the skeleton. Find the first socket, which is foot L socket. You can just copy the name of this from here and paste it in. Now the distance we want to travel here. Now you want to go far enough where it goes through the foot and through the floor, but not too far where it will start looking very weird because your character is going to be trying to stretch too far. So the best way of do, doing that is taking the capsule's half height and then also half of that and that gives you sort of the knee length okay so if we take the half height and divide it by two that'll give us a good distance so i'm going to go into my event graph drag your capsule component out and then get the half height of that and then divide that by two And that'll give you a good distance based on the actual height of the capsule. As I said, that'll give you sort of the knee length. 
Okay, so that's going to give us these two outputs, out here location and foot trace offset for the left foot. This is for the left foot, remember. And let's just test this, and you can see the line trace in action. So you see that red line going through the floor, and you can see the, the red square, that's the where it's been hitting the floor. As we go up, you can see it hit the floor there, there, and go, going on and on and on. So we now need to do that for the right foot as well. Um, but before we do that, let's actually store this foot trace offset. So I'm going to drag that out and promote that to a variable. And we'll call this one IK left foot offset. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing, but for right foot. So I'm going to copy and paste all this. And um, the socket name is going to be foot R socket, um, socket. So just do foot R. And again, drag that out and promote the float to a variable. IK right foot offset. And that's the distance, remember, that we're going to be raising the foot up. Okay, so that's that there. Let's have a look at that in here. Okay, so now we're going to see the two red lines, the two traces going on for each foot. Perfect. So that data is spitting out the distance that the foot has to travel to reach the floor. Okay, so in the next part, we'll be putting that onto our animation blueprint and then starting to show you some of the things we need to fix to get it to look much better. So join us in the next part right now over on patreon.com forward slash Daily, where though, uh, other you and other patrons can access videos before anyone else. And massive thank you to Udo's patrons for voting for this video series and, uh, and your continued support. It wouldn't be possible without you guys, so thank you again so, so much. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you subscribe to get access to videos every single week, as well as our live stream. Thanks again, everyone, and I'll see you all in the next part. Bye-bye.